Alright guys, I'm going to show you guys the oldest trick in magic, okay? This trick dates back over 5,000 years. There are hieroglyphics in ancient Egypt men performing this very trick, okay? This trick is very simple, and a magician's ability is often based off of how he performs this trick, okay? It involves one cup, one ball, no more, no less. If you were here, I'd like you to examine it. It's a solid one cup, a wooden cork knitted ball, okay? Nothing too special about either one of them. Alright, now the first part is going to be a game, not a trick. Okay, we're going to warm up with the game first. Can you see this ball? Obviously, yes. Can you see it now? No, because it's inside of the opaque cup. If I turn the cup over, it becomes visible on the other side of the cup. Okay, now the first part is going to be a game, like I said before, and we're going to warm up right here. Okay, this is the thing. I'm going to place the ball in the cup. I'll turn the cup over. Okay, in one motion, I'll place the ball in my pocket. You have to guess the ball in the cup or it's in my pocket. Okay, only two choices. All right, let's begin. Place the ball in the cup. I'll turn the cup over. You have to guess. Is the ball under the cup? In my pocket, okay? Because you're not here, I have to go over both choices. Now, some of you can see the ball still under the cup, and you guys don't trust me, okay? On the other half of you, I'm going to say the ball is in my pocket, and you guys are right, okay? Now, if, you, if the ball is not in my pocket, it can't be under the cup, right? I mean, because it can't be two places at once. Wrong. You're not watching, you gotta watch closer. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. I cheat, and here's how, okay? I place the ball in the cup. I really do. I turn the cup over. I really do. I place mine in my pocket. I really do, but here's where I cheat. You see the ball's in the cup. I see the ball's in my pocket, okay? You see the ball in my pocket. I see the ball's in the cup. There's no way you're going to win, but because I'm your friend, I'm going to make sure you win this time. Watch out, I'll extra slow for you, okay? And before you make your guess, cup or pocket? Probably figured it out. There's a hidden trap door in the cup. I'll try and show it to you right here. You actually see the walker right through the bottom. Actually, goes through both ways. Okay, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm gonna grab two more of these solid aluminum cups. And as I told you about the trap doors, if you loosen them just enough, you can actually get two aluminum cups to pass right through each other. Okay, so for you guys, I don't want to cheat. I'm actually gonna not use the trap doors this time, okay? Now this one resembled the old three shell game. There's one, two, three shells, and one P, okay? Your job is to follow the P. My job as a magician is to place the ball, or pretend to place the ball, and have the ball appear where it's the least likely. One more time, I'll place the ball here. I'll turn this over to here. I'll move these two. The ball then jumps from here to over here, okay? Last time I'll place the ball here. I'll switch these two. The ball then jumps from here to over here. Not many people like playing that game with me, so um, let's get on to the magic. I'll grab two more of these wooden corked yellow and red balls, okay? I'm going to show you an actual sequence of events from a 17th century bestseller known as Hocus Pocus Jr., okay? The idea here is that I'll place the ball in the middle cup. I'll place the ball on top. I'll take a seemingly solid. Put on cup, I'll place it on top with a rub, a snap, and a tap. I can make solid, finish with solid, joining is made below. Now you're going to see let's watch it again. This time, the ball going through not one, but two solid aluminum cups. This method was a favorite of a man by the name of Matthew Buchinger, a little man of Neuberg. Matthew Buchinger stood only 28 inches tall when stacked on top of the cups, obscured almost his entire height. That's enough for three. Matthew Buchinger had no arms or legs, but he did have 14 children. The most famous man to ever play the game, the Italian bard of Mayo, Bosco. Before every routine, Bosco would take his magic wand, he'd pause the tip, and he'd pray a prayer for every magic routine. Okay, now I'm going to show you Bosco's sequence of the cups and balls. The first ball is the easiest, okay? You place it into the hand, take the wand, place it through the hand, out the other side. That ball disappears. Okay. Ball number two. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just a little bit. Different. Ball number three. Ball number three is the most difficult ball, but also the most visual. You see the exact moment this ball disappears. Okay.
don't know if it gets much of a reaction, but you actually see the exact moment this ball disappears, okay? Three balls gone. Yeah, three balls return. Okay, now we're going to get to the interactive part where you get to come and play, okay? I'm going to place a ball under each cup. Okay, and you can pick any cup you want, completely your choice. Pick cup A, B or C. Pick any cup you want. A, B or C, okay? Completely your choice. Maybe the letter's confusing. Let's go numbers, okay? Pick any one cup you want. One, two, or three. Pick any one cup you want, all right? Cup number one, that's a great choice. You know what? I don't know which cup you're going to pick, so let's just say you pick cup number two, okay? Now, I'll take the ball from cup number two. You get to pick cup one or two, your choice. Either one. Let's go with one just for, I'm on a video camera, you're not really, let's go with one. I'll take the ball from cup number two. Take the ball, cup number one. If this worked, the ball should leave there, which one it's made over here. Now I know you're thinking, what if you chose the other cup? The ball would then jump from here to over here. Now if that one. It should be empty, there should be two there. Okay? Now, magicians use three cups, three balls, they talk, there's a magic wand. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty hard to keep up, but here. We're going to get into the math section of this trick now, okay? If I have three cups, three balls, and I take one ball away, okay? How many does that leave? Two, okay? I'll take one more. How many does that leave? And where's that last ball at? You say something that's in a cup. I wonder if there was a 10 or 20. What's your guess? 1, 2, 3, 10, 20? This is the best part. It's actually only 1, but if you're watching closely, this one returned and this one returned. Okay? Now, that's my cups and balls routine, but I'm going to give you one extra tip. Be careful when you're cleaning up that you don't place the balls into the wrong pocket. This is the wrong pocket. You place the ball in the wrong pocket, everybody claps. Why does everybody clap? Because they find out they were right. Everyone thinks that there's a fourth ball. And let me show you something. Um, I'm actually going to show you something. Okay. I'm going to show you guys something right here. Okay. Now, oh, there's two methods to this madness. Either there's a fourth ball or something called sleight of hand. Okay. Is that I don't actually take the ball when I say I do. Okay, that's one thing. And the second one is that there's a fourth ball. And you guys are right, because that fourth ball is right over here. I don't know how you missed this one, though. That is my cups and balls.